Well, welcome back, everybody. This is part two of episode 13. If you haven't seen part one yet, I invite you to check it out and then come back to part two here. Uh, you should find the links in the description below the video. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm continuing on with this fabric and I've gone in here and I had a little tone and I'm, I'm cleaning up the edges right now because you know I can see that it needs some cleaning up using this hard extra hard charcoal uh, it's really good for doing very detailed lines and I want to get a nice sharp demarcation here between the fabric and the neck which has got that really dark shadow and so uh, I use that uh, hard charcoal to, to refine it. And now I'm going to just do some touch-ups here uh, with the uh, shadow area using a very soft charcoal pencil. Okay, going back to the extra hard charcoal, you can see that I'm going to use it to really give me some nice sharp line a demarcation you know the separation of two different objects in the drawing I just want to get that edge in really nice and sharp so that it doesn't look like it's actually part of the garment and I'm gonna go back in again with the soft charcoal pencil here and another reason to put this soft charcoal in here is because when I put those little frayed fabric lines in there I need something to pull off all right, let's see. What do I'm using here? Ah, oh, the 6B pencil. So I'm going to start doing a little bit of base toning here. Just kind of get that graphite in there. Uh, give me something to blend. And then I will uh, start pulling out the highlights, the lines, the pattern lines that you see in there. So uh, for right now, I'm just going to get in here and I'm going to put in the base tone. Now I want to point out as I'm shading in the base tone is that it may appear to your eye at this point to be slightly darker than the original, the reference photo. However, when you go in and blend, you're, you end up taking some of that material off during blending. Another thing too is after I blend, then I'm going to go in and start lightening up areas. areas and then if there's areas that need to be redarkened, I'll darken those areas. So you just want to kind of get some kind of a tone in the neighborhood there uh, to give you a starting place. And that's what I've, I've done here. Now after a little bit of cleaning up as you saw me do there, uh, I'm coming in here and I'm finishing up on the base tone. And let's see, what do I got here? A 10B? Okay, so now I'm going to work the darker area that I'm pointing out there. So I'm going to add some darker graphite in that area. And so when I blend everything, you're going to have some areas of that, that spot there darker than other areas. And that's just going to assist me uh, when it comes time to start pulling out those uh, really light colored strands you see. Look like checkerboard strands going you know, left to right and up and down and so forth. Now look at the area I shaded in the reference. Do you notice I have two tones basically and there's two tones in the reference. This is before I even started blending which I'm doing right now. I'm going to start blending with this Q-tip cotton swab thing here. And as you can see it starts to change the tone somewhat. Notice how it's getting smooth and dark in the areas that I added the 10B. But then as I start to move over to the left it's going to be lighter because I used the 6B uh, adjacent to it and uh, use the lighter hand. So I already started doing the various tones when I shaded and now I'm going to just blend them all in and you should see that difference start to pop up. I 
I should also point out that I changed Q-tips to a clean one because I didn't want to carry all that graphite from the dark 10B over into the 6B area. You see how the shading, uh, the tones are different? You see the, it's lighter on the left and it's darker on the right. So I had done this uh, pre-blend during my uh, drawing in the base tone. So that is a simple way to get it started before you go in there and start pulling out the highlights and so forth. And see here again, I'm, I'm using another dark, this, this is a woodless 10B pencil, and it tends to be slightly darker than a regular 10B. And you can see that I'm just picking out the areas where I could see that is already darker than the rest of the area there. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of this darker graphite in those areas and then blend them into uh, the, the image here. And, and you will see a variation of tones by doing this. Okay, I'm now going to start pulling off some graphite to uh, lighten the area that I just pointed out there. Now I'm able to pull this graphite out quite easily because when I laid down the graphite, I did so lightly. I just glided the pencil on top of the paper. If you press into the paper with your pencil, uh, then you do not afford yourself the opportunity to be able to come back and start lighting up the areas like I'm doing here. And as you can see, I'm just looking at the reference and I'm just picking off graphite uh, that I see in certain areas. And then I will blend to make that smoother looking. And then I'm gonna start pulling things off with my uh, low tack uh, frisket tape and that stylus that I'm holding in my hand there. Okay, now I'm gonna start pulling out those light white lines that you see going through the fabric from left to right and then up and down like a checkerboard. So I'm going to simulate that pattern using this low frisket tape. And you can see I can just pull graphite and charcoal right off. This is a really cool trick. Uh, I have several videos on YouTube where I have demonstrated this technique. As a matter of fact, Now notice how cool that is. I could just pull out all these nice little pattern lines. This is going to help you in so many ways with detailed highlights and so forth in your drawing. Now you can see that the pattern really stands out a lot. And so of course I'm not going to leave it like that. Uh, when you pull it out, you go back in uh, like with a blending stump or a Q-tip or something. Now in this case, I'm going to use a blending stump and you just lighten it down or dampen it down uh, that's how I call it damping it down uh, just so that it it doesn't stand out so bright and you can see you can just start blending it into the base tone that you already have there and then it, it's very subtle and you want to go back and forth with the low tack or your eraser however you choose to do this and then you want to dampen it down, go back in, pull some more out, dampen it down. You can do this two, three times uh, before it becomes a little bit difficult to continue. Uh, but you're going to see this really cool uh, fabric pattern start to show up that's going to mimic what is in the reference photo. Now what I'm doing here is I'm doing the stray fabric onto the neck. You see that's where I had that soft dark charcoal uh, right up against the fabric and now I can pull out the highlights and you can see these little white fabric hairs that uh, are fraying from the clothing onto the neck there 
and that's what you see in the reference so uh, I'm using this tape to do that same thing because charcoal is a little more difficult to pull off I have to go over the same areas two three four times uh, so be prepared for that Now I want to stress how important it is to keep looking at your reference as you go along. Don't get focused just on your drawing for long periods of time without always looking back every few seconds. And I mean every few seconds, two, three, four seconds. Your eyes should be flickering back to your reference, back to your drawing, back to your reference, back to your drawing, back and forth and your brain will pick up differences really easily and then you want to address those right when you you notice the differences okay so I see some really dark area in the reference right here and so I'm using this soft uh, dark char charcoal pencil here to just get those dark areas in between the little threads that I just pulled out and then you want to dampen it down so it doesn't stand out so uh, uh, abrasive looking, but you want to smooth that down and tone it down, pull it out with your blender, in this case the Q-tip. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and start pu pulling out some more uh, charcoal and graphite with my low tack tape here, get some more details in there. And I'll just go back and forth until, and you notice every time I keep pulling that tape off, uh, it, that's because I'm looking at the reference so I, I got to get my hand out of the way so I can see what I'm doing and I'm just trying to duplicate every little tiny detail that I see there Now you want to be aware of all the differences of tone. I see some mid-tone here. I'm going to use my blender and just bring that mid-tone in a little bit more. So there's a separation between the real light area in the bottom left, the mid-tones in the upper left, and the darker tones in the right corner area there. And of course as I do that it gives me an opportunity then to pull out some of those little highlights that I see, those little white lines you might say. Uh, in the original reference and in case you're wondering those lines that I'm pulling out to mimic what I see in the reference they do not have to be in the exact same location as the reference the illusion that they are is all you need you just need to give it the illusion you don't have to have them all spaced out perfectly the same number of lines the same exact direction or curve or whatever you can do that if you want uh, you'll spend way more hours than necessary and nobody really looks that close you just need the illusion that you have duplicated what is in the reference take a look at that and see how the two are starting to look more and more alike One of the things I like to do in my portraits is I like to pick out things that are obvious details. Where it, when you look at a drawing, there's a little black dot over to the left, or there's this little white line that curves over at the right. I'll put those in my portrait because those are the things that your eye is drawn to. 
and so that your viewers are going to be drawn to those as well and the more that you're able to spot those little details and match them precisely to the original the more convincing the drawing becomes the more realistic so you spend a little bit of time doing that you know here I am I could just leave this alone and say hey this part is done but you know I see little things that pop up I'm gonna just gonna spend a little bit of time and add those in pull those out and so forth uh, until it gets to the point where as my eyes go back and forth there just isn't very much variance between the two to be a big deal okay this is the end of part two and if part three has already been uploaded you'll see that link also found in the description area and I'll see you there thanks for watching don't forget to like